The female lead tells women's stories. Remarkable, diverse, inspiring. An educational charity promoting positive female role models who show the many different routes to success and fulfillment. So often I hear people saying, oh, how do I get started? How do I do this? How do you do it? You just start. You have to begin. And it won't be perfect and it'll be messy and it'll be hard, but you're doing something and you're on your way. Empowering future generations of women through films and a book of 60 women donated to 18,000 schools in the UK and USA, reaching millions of young people. And through our female lead societies, we help girls to discover new role models that speak to their passions, ambitions and careers. Through our research into social media and mental health, we found a solution to the negative impact of social media on teen girls. Through a simple intervention, which encouraged girls to follow different influences, we were able to change their entire social media experience and sense of well-being. We called this campaign Disrupt Your Feed, and it reached 20 million people on social, with 330 million impressions all over the globe. So what's next? As well as inspiring girls, we're now finding ways to measurably improve the lives of older women through data, research, and the stories of those who have overcome challenges and found their own personal versions of success. We're a long way from being finished. Join us in our mission. Are we gonna talk about women's rights again? Yes, we're gonna talk about it until there's balance. Hello everyone and welcome to the Female Lead Live. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Edwina Dunn. I'm the founder of the Female Lead and we're a charity focused on the empowerment of women. We choose to partner with certain expert organizations to bring you some of the services that help to maximize your female talent and to help women to develop stronger skills and learn how to navigate what is, we know, an unequal workplace. Each of these expert companies, which will be featured on our website, donate part of their income to us at the Female Lead. And with this, we can reach and help more women and girls. And we always make this clear and transparent in all that we do. So in this session, we're going to be talking about accelerating the development of female talent in organizations. Let's just have a think about this context and please do store up your questions. We will come to those at the end. We know that women are leaving the workforce in their thousands and the retention of talent mid-career continues to be a really pressing problem. We know that women's careers stall mid-career. The current working model is based on a one-size-fits-all, a system designed by men for men. And the female lead is on a mission to challenge this approach. So we're all about collecting data on what women want from work. And we'll be supported by a new and dedicated data science organization which is the backbone and data capability of the female leads fulfillment finder for business. And this will be a new service. You're gonna hear more about the fulfillment finder and the tools we use to help women at work, to help them maximize their sense of fulfillment, encouraging them to upskill and to cope with this uneven playing field. We're also going to introduce you to the Breakthrough Leadership Programme 
which is really exciting. It's a gold standard eight month program co-designed by the very best female leadership experts. The workplace of the future needs to reflect women's different needs and aspirations. I think we all agree on that. We all want and need to create a happier, healthier and more sustainable environment. And this can be good for men too. So we'll model and learn from women, but it will apply and help men too, who are also trapped in today's workplace and rules. So first of all, let me introduce you to my wonderful partner for this session, Helen Hambleton. She is the founder and CEO of People Untapped. Welcome, Helen. Thank you, Edwina. So let me tell you something about her. Um, she provides and her organization provides leadership development and executive coaching to organizations both in the UK and around the world. Her team's developed an exciting gold standard cross organizational leadership program, especially for talented women with leadership potential. Helen, tell us, what does it do? Who have you worked with? What's it all about? Yeah, absolutely. And, and thank you for inviting me to be here today. It's, a, it's an absolutely important day for us because I think we've been working for the last six months or so on how do we combine what we know about leadership development and organisations and talent management with what you know about um, your research and all the insights that you have from things like Fulfillment Finder and how do we create something truly magnificent together. So as an organisation, we work with large global corporates, over 100,000 employees, right through to tiny founder-led tech startups that are just at the pre-seed stage of funding and everything in between. So um, we are purely a learning and development organization just focused on how do we get the brilliance out of people and enable them to be the very best they can be in the workplace. We are on that mission together, Helen. Wonderful. Well, look, let me say a few words of context. Um, I guess we've all heard views on what it means to be an effective leader and the idea of 10 easy steps on how to become one. But we all know that being a leader isn't easy and perhaps it's not for everyone. We might talk about that later. My advice, having been a leader, is beware what you wish for. Um, it can be a hard and lonely place, but if it is for you, we want to know, obviously, what makes a good leader. So as the female leader, we've been exploring what sort of a leader you would be. Um, and we have been looking at character and your emotions, what makes you feel fulfilled, and how that determines the way in which you relate to others. So, so in essence the kind of leader you are. And we've created with um, a neuroscientist and his organization, um, 12 different female personas. And we found them completely fascinating. Now, I'm not gonna show you them in detail. We're gonna talk about a couple of them, but everyone can do this. And you can have a look at Fulfillment Finder and do it yourself um, online and you can discover something about it. So to sort of fast track on that and to give you an idea of why this is important, because it is all about self-awareness. It's about knowing you and what matters to you. We're gonna have a look at two women who have kindly shared their personas with us. One is Joan Marie. She is an extraordinary space scientist. And the other is Alice, who is a lawyer, but perhaps doesn't look like many of the lawyers we see in the workplace today. So let's just have a look at those. Hey everyone, I am Joan Marie, or at Your Female Engineer, and I recently took the Female Leads Fulfillment Finder survey. And it's a survey that asks you questions about society, relationships, work, money, and even self. And so after I did the survey, I got everyone's friend, which I think is extremely spot on because 
since I, I since I can remember, I've always been the person to help other people. My page specifically, I want to help and inspire young women to get into science, technology, engineering, and math, which is typically a male-dominated career. And so I want to inspire and help people, and it makes me happy helping others. I'm also an excellent listener, and I am just, like the survey says, I'm everyone's friend. So please go ahead and check that out. Check the survey because it is spot on and I want to know what your results are. I completed the Female Leads Fulfillment Finder survey and I couldn't believe how accurate the results were. My persona is the influencer, which means that when I'm feeling fulfilled, I'm a connector and a leader. It means that I'm always on the move and I can't sit still, which is accurate. And it also means that I approach work and life as a series of challenges, which I'd never realized before, but it totally makes sense. Apparently, I'd feel more relaxed if I directed my positive energy and inspiration towards planning and keeping things simple. That's advice that I'm definitely going to take on board. Brilliant. I always love to see that. And if any of you are interested, I did it and I came out surprisingly enough as a reformer. And maybe Helen, when it comes to your time, you might reveal your persona as well. The point is, this is something for everyone, and that is what we wanted to bring. But we've now created a very special fulfillment finder for business. And this becomes a very serious tool. So I'm going to show you just a really simple overview. Um, this is, for those who know me from my past, this is a new data science. And it's rich new data. And it's been entrusted to us. Um, by our millions of followers. We now have had 100,000 plus survey respondents who have shared what matters most to them at work and at home. And all of this brings new perspectives and insight, really to help us understand what drives employees to come to work to choose your company. It's gone very quiet. Have I lost you? No. No, we're still there. It's just gone quiet. It's, it's spooky. All right, great. So let me tell you about it. So how does Fulfillment Finder work? Well, number one, it's all about listening. So your female employees take part in our survey and we listen to what's important to them. Step two, we understand that we take that data and we benchmark it against our national or international profiles and compare the results. So it's all protected and anonymized, but it's very, very powerful and insightful. And we can understand the key characteristics. What kind of women, what kind of leaders do you have within your business? And what do those women want and expect out of life and work? Step three. We can then use that understanding to recommend or suggest new ways that a business might relate to these different aspirations, these different fulfillment needs, and actually start to shape a slightly different workplace. Maybe not 12 different types with the 12 personas, but maybe three or four different types because we know we're not all the same and we don't all need the same things. And then once we have those understanding of the differences in the women, we can create content and coaching, which is very much tailored to those different female employees. And that will help drive engagement, retention, and a really long-term sense of happiness and fulfillment in the workplace. So what do we know about fulfillment? Well, it has three key ingredients in our survey, in our benchmarking. One is emotional, which is all about how we feel when we're fulfilled. The second category, I'm whizzing through this, is functional, which is who matters most to us or, you know, is it work? Is it money? Is it our role in society? Or is it how we feel ourselves? 
And then the third area is all about the organization and the things that make a difference. So pay and promotions, um, fairness, flexible or remote working, or even childcare provisions. So these are the things that really, really matter to us. And we can measure those and see the differences. So let's just show you how much they vary. And these might be very logical, but we can now show and prove them with data, which I think is incredibly exciting. So here we have some 45,025 to 34 year olds. And we can see here that these women are more likely to be social, um, they value their friendship group, and they take real pleasure in creating harmony and support at work, possibly at home as well. That contrasts with age groups 35 to 44. Here we see many more women um, in fact, 26,500 here, fully engaged in practical and carefully planned lives. They have potentially partners or dependents, and they manage complexity, they juggle day to day, and they are looking for a, a really safe and planned career path. They need to know that they are in control and looking after all those people that matter most to them. And then finally, or not finally, but in this case, my final slide on age groups, the 45 to 54 year old age group, and these women are much more independent, they're more knowledgeable, starting to enjoy influence and share success. So bear that in mind, bear the differences. We have about 9,000 women in this category. Do we know that as a business? No, today. But if we did, what would we do differently? And that's the thing that I would love you all to think about just for a moment. The idea is that we put that all into a pack and help you to compare and understand. And then finally, after that, to take action. And, you know, this data can help shape policies. It can help create content that might be useful or, or inspiring, um, and importantly, relevant to the categories that we've discovered with you. And then that can all move into an activation around coaching, which is what we're going to talk about. So that's really a canter through the new service. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more, quite a lot more, about that activation that coaching side so what i'd say is once you understand the drivers and the characteristics of your female workforce you can adapt those policies and processes and especially in a post-covid world you can also help the women to strengthen their skills and prepare for leadership because we've all been a bit shaken and that's what we're going to talk about today breakthrough leadership program so helen I come to you at long last with some relief so that you can help us understand the course. Let me, let me understand, let me ask you a question first. So you worked in talent and leadership development roles. What do you see a tool like Fulfillment Finder adding to an organization? Yeah, I think um, one of the things I see is a lot of organizations are measuring almost the outputs from a diversity perspective. They're looking at, you know, the number of people in, females in senior leadership roles. They're looking at retention rates, those sorts of things. But actually what, what big data gives us is an understanding of root cause. And if we're looking at um, any problem in any business situation or any personal situation, quite frankly, we need to understand what's causing it. And I think what something like Fulfillment Finder does is gives an organization a bit more granularity of who have they got in their organization? What's going on for them? What are the drivers? Um, what are the strengths from a cultural perspective, from a leadership perspective, from kind of attitudes, processes, et cetera? What's really working? What's not? Um, and understanding their own population. And only when you understand that population can you think about, well, what can we do about this? Um, how can we 
um, rocket boot, that mid-career um, sort of sluggish slow that usually happens in terms of female career development. So I think this is about getting under the skin, giving organizations bigger data to, to actually start to make action plans. And in that sort of middle um, career, that mid-career band, perhaps even more sensitivity and awareness to, to drive that retention or, or to get that trajectory back up. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of research around, including um, yours, around kind of what happens to women's careers at that point. And actually, it's not one thing. Um, it, it's multiple things and different things affect different women at different times. You know, I, I had my children quite young, um, so, so I maybe don't quite fit into the classical age bracket, but I absolutely know that those things hit you at different points in, in your life and, and understanding that dynamic and the profile of the organisation is key. And we know, don't we, from, from, from the research that we did that, you know, women don't suddenly become lacking in ambition or not wanting to take risks. Um, those are all myths. And so this will help us get to, as you rightly say, true root causes. Yeah. yeah. So what sort of things have you seen businesses do really well to accelerate female leadership development or bring more women into leadership roles? Yeah, I think there are so many different things that organisations, really strong organisations in this space have done. And actually, um, that workplace report that was just issued in the US around what the best organisations are doing and what um, though the other organizations are doing, they list so many different interventions, activities. So again, it's not about one thing. So some of the things I've seen work really effectively, I'm actually going to start off by um, giving the men and the male leaders a bit of a shout out. Allyship, allyship is key about actually getting male leaders to stand up, to talk, to sponsor, to mentor talented women in the organization. I've been very lucky in, in my career to have some amazing male mentors, um, but them standing up and showing up <laughs> is, is really important. So it's not just kind of words on a diversity and inclusion policy, it actually comes out through leadership and role modeling. Policies and process, um, whilst they might not be the most exciting things in the world, actually looking at them through that mid-career drop-off lens is really important. The importance of even things like your performance management process, organisations are really good at, um, mostly, um, how do we make sure that we are not discriminating at the point of hire? But actually, really looking at performance review processes, for example, when people go on extended periods of leave, what happens to their bonus? What happens to the promotion cycles? What happens to the way in which um, they are rewarded, recognised, do they even get considered for new roles, looking at those kind of business processes, particularly in big organisations, and saying, is there something in that process which is sort of driving that slowdown um, at that point? Networking, very powerful to create female networks and male networks. You know, this isn't just the spa versus the golf club. This is actually around connecting colleagues at a similar level with similar aspirations in one large network, how the world operates. Role models, um, you know, I'm, I'm preaching to the converted on the importance of role models um, and role models that people can really relate to. Those and those women are being mentors and sponsors. So this, um, again, I'm going to steal your words around uh, we rise up um, by lifting others. You know, what is it about those senior women that they don't shut the door behind them, that they actually open that door and bring other talented, more junior women up um, through the ranks? Minority specific programs. So maybe we'll talk a bit more about that in terms of the breakthrough leadership programs. There are there's a few organisations that have done this um, in-house who have actually seen some really phenomenal results by proactively accelerating the growth of female leaders in the organization. It does make a difference um, and it has been shown to make a difference, but not on its own. Flexible working, um, even more so post COVID um, and, and not just at junior levels. I, I heard just this week about it. Uh, we're looking for someone to fill this job. Can it be done part time? Oh, no. 
No, well, why not? Um, we should be asking those policies vertically as well as across organisations. Seen organisations really looking at diverse candidate pools, particularly for senior roles. So, you know, we won't look at a candidate pool from an agency, for example, unless it is um, balanced and diverse in its nature. Of course, that can't just be lip service. It has to actually deliver results. Telling the world, you know, telling the world actively as an organisation, what are you doing in the space of, of female leadership and diverse leadership? What it does is it attracts more women in um, when you're externally hiring. And then another um, thing that I've seen work very, very effectively is maternity coaching. So giving talented women when they leave your workforce extra investment, which sometimes feels counterintuitive, but they're leaving for a year or they're leaving for six months actually invest then to help them to exit well and to help them to land back in well um, is, is definitely an investment that, that pays back in terms of long term retention. So those are some of the things I've seen organisations do brilliantly, but it's not just one thing. And it just goes to show that we can all learn something from what you're saying here, as indeed I have listening to you. Thank you, Helen. So. Um, will you tell us about this Breakthrough Leadership Programme? I, I feel we have to allow some time for questions. So if you can tell us about the programme, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. So um, this came about just over a year ago where we were looking at how can we as an organisation actually leave a legacy in this world? How can we as an unashamedly female-led organization actually put what we do as a profession into practice and leave a legacy. So this program is an eight month long program designed cross organizationally, so not in a singular organization, to be able to support women, talented women, typically mid-career, so they're not already in the C-suite, but you believe that they have capabilities in the future to grow their leadership um, capabilities to give them almost the opportunity to rocket boost their, those, their careers in that mid-career stage. We spend so much time um, with our heads down working really hard that this programme is intended to allow these women the opportunity to put their heads up, think about who are they as a leader? How do they, how do they stand out? How do they influence with impact? How do they coach others? How do they manage their pressure and well-being? And how do they get clear on their own career journey and trajectory and what they really want, what makes them fulfilled and how they can get there? And then finally, I think one of the most important pieces of this programme is about legacy. How can they then support the development of other female leaders, either within their organisations or outside in the community? And one of the things that we'll be doing here, this is a very, very practical programme with regular workshops, so seven one day workshops over the eight month period and one to one executive coaching to really give those women the best chance of becoming the leaders of tomorrow. And we're also interspersing some of the things that we know trip up women along the way. This isn't about fixing them, but it's about giving them a, a platform and an opportunity to really go into those topics that maybe are considered taboo. So we'll be talking about menopause. We'll be talking about divorce. We'll be talking about infertility as appropriate to different delegates at different times so that we can really equip people with um, the skills, knowledge and confidence to be the very best leaders they can be in the future. So we, we are super excited to be launching um, in the UK as a face to face programme in November in London. And then in January, we'll be launching a virtual programme um, which will be globally um, available because it's entirely virtual. So that, that's the programme in a nutshell, but that's a, a whistle stop tour. Amazing, amazing. And I think the thing that I want to say is a huge thank you, Helen, because I know that um, you are dedicating the profits of this breakthrough program to the female lead, which is um, an amazingly generous uh, offer, donation. Con I, you know, what can I say? Anyway. And, and Edwina, Edwina, let me tell you why. Um, because if we care about lasting impact, we care about in 15 years time, us not needing to do these programs. And the, in fact, the way I came across the female lead in the first place was some, through your work with schools. And I think a lot of people, particularly professionals on LinkedIn that may not know about your educational work, 
that's actually at the heart of the organization and the impact we can have if we can inspire and equip the next generation of girls coming through means we won't need this stuff in 15 years time so that's our gift to the world if you like that you know we shouldn't be needed in 15 years time in this space that's a great mission i i share it with you 100 percent. thank you helen now I want to talk, I know we've got some incredible people out there in our virtual audience because I've seen some of the fantastic names and organizations. Do we have any questions, please? Here we go. How does data play a part in an organization's development of female talent? Hmm. Are you going to go for that, Helen, or...? I, I can I can start. You're the data scientist, so uh, so so I'll I'll do a little bit. I think it is it is as I said earlier about getting to the root cause and showing the organisation what the situation really is. Because I think you you alluded earlier to the myths that exist, um, and I think <clears throat> excuse me. Only when we have data can we disprove the myths that exist. There's a lot of and particularly male leaders out there that have certain beliefs about, well, they will want to do this or they won't want to do the other. And I think it's only when we show them hard, hard facts, actually, can we educate and enable them to think differently. I completely agree. And for those who know me and my previous sort of data and technology career, they will know that, you know, I focused very much on classifying consumers and showing that not all consumers are the same, not all consumers want the same thing. And this interest now, this passion for me, is to show that not all women, not all employees are the same. They don't want the same. To some, money is not the most important thing, believe it or not. Um, but recognition or friendships or making a difference, those are the things that matter. And that's really what I want to get to. And you're right. I think data is the international language that will allow us not just to know that, but to measure progress against it. Great question. Thank you. Kate, where is the application? That's Fantastic. a good question. Great question, Kate. So um, the program is aimed at um, organisations that would sponsor their top talent for a place on the program. Um, so if you go to the Female Leads website, um, then there's a leadership course in the top right hand corner. Um, you can click on that, you'll go th straight through to our website um, and you can get in touch that way. But it is an organisational sponsored program because the, um, the importance of sponsorship and mentorship from your organisation um, as a start point is really key. Thank you, Kate. Here's one, is everyone capable of becoming a leader? Hmm. Great question, great question. Um, yes, if you want to be. Um, and what you can do as a start point, everyone is capable of leading themselves. And we often forget about the importance of self-leadership. And in terms of the ripple effect we have as human beings is insane, whether that's to our co-workers, to our children, to our family, to our friends. So can we lead ourselves? Yes. Does everyone want to lead larger and larger and larger teams? No, not everyone wants to. But all of the evidence would suggest you can build those capabilities if you want to. Again, one of the most critical capabilities has just come out and there's a great Forbes article this week around the importance of empathy in CEOs. So in chief execs, um, empathy being the most critical capability you can actually demonstrate. So is everyone capable? Yes, but you have to want it and you have to be prepared to work at it. And certainly from the female leads point of view, we talk about taking the lead in your own life. And we know that a planned life gives you greater confidence and greater power. So it's something for everyone to think about. Thank you. How can women be genuinely supported to have fulfilling careers alongside balancing the time needed to balance other parts of their life? Well, that is the question, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think this is my view on the subject. I think it's about 
knowing what's important to you, knowing your boundaries and knowing some of the trade-offs that you will have to make. In, and this isn't unique to women, by the way. We all have to make trade-offs in all parts of our lives and consciously making choices about our career so that we are aligned and fulfilled. Because there is no point having the high flying career if you're not fulfilled and you're not happy. That leads to some more disastrous consequences. So it's about really facing in and having a looking yourself in the mirror, working out what you really want to do, what success looks like for you, because that looks different for everyone. Um, and then working out what steps you need to take in order to get there. Nicely said. Another question, where have organizations got it wrong in terms of female leadership and training? Mm. So for me, it's about where I've seen it go wrong is around um, only doing one thing and doing it like a token thing. We're just going to we're just going to organize this networking group or we're just going to you know, organize diverse candidate pools, but we're not going to do anything else about changing the system or changing the culture or changing the mindset. So only doing one thing and expecting miracles is probably not going to get you very far. Um, I think the other thing is around, um, and it's quite an interesting one when it comes to female only or minority only programs is, well, does that alienate the others that are not invited. So the positioning and the communication is important around, no, this isn't about alienation. This is actually about accelerating people we believe in, but it doesn't guarantee them a job. It doesn't, just because you've been on this program doesn't mean to say you get a ticket to the stars. You know, it is about accelerating their capabilities um, and potential. But I think just doing one thing and expecting everything to change, um, that, that doesn't work. Yeah, it's it. Yeah, that one thing that it's almost like organizations need to take on some of the complexity of human beings now, rather than say, these are our static organizational rules. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Any more questions? Oh, here's a good one. <laughs> when does the Breakthrough Leadership course start? So our first inaugural cohort, uh, which is very exciting to say, um, starts in the beginning of November. I believe it's the 6th of November. And I'll be told off by my team if I've got that date wrong um, with a launch event. And then the first workshop is a couple of weeks after that. And then our global first global cohort starts um, in January. So second week in January, I think. Exciting. Really great. It's so soon. I mean, it's, it's a very soon. Yeah. Brilliant. Any more? Okay. How will you know if this program has made a difference? It's probably going to have to be our last question, but over to you, Helen. Again, a, a really important question. As um, actually a scientist, I might be in leadership development, but I am a scientist at heart. Knowing that what you've done has actually changed the dial somewhere and made a difference is, is what gets me out of bed in the morning. So I think it's a great question. Um, with this type of program, it's it's naive to think that everything changes immediately. So we have an effect at an individual level around capabilities. So we would expect the leadership skills of the individual delegates to improve significantly over an eight month period. That's plenty of time to work with an individual. But in the longer term, what we plan to do is start measuring the long term trajectory of these women and these delegates. So we would be looking to see improved engagement levels with your organization we would be expecting to see improved fulfillment levels um, of these individuals. We would expect to see better retention in that mid-career zone um, compared to maybe those that don't go on the programme. We would also be looking to track promotion and progression. Now, remembering that the only uh, promotion is not the only form of progression. Um, and to go back to that qu earlier question, well, how do I balance everything? Sometimes progression is about breadth. It's not just about promotion and upwards trajectory. It's about fulfillment and en enjoyment and engagement and balance. So we would be looking to measure those, both promotion and progression. Um, and I think there's another measure here around, but it's a softer one that you won't necessarily always be able to attribute to a programme, is by women getting involved in building the potential and the capabilities of other women in the organization, 
and beyond the organization that actually there's a sort of a pull through legacy now how we measure that is quite hard to do but we intend to give it a good try um, and i also believe there's a public reputation um, impact as well again that will be for you to measure as an organization rather than for me to measure for you um, but it's certainly something that we would expect to see a knock-on effect for you and I certainly hope that over time we can measure fulfillment scores nationally or by country over time and just see what changes and then within organizations what changes. What I find really interesting is diversity can mean more things than just our color or our age. And actually, diversity can mean why do we come to work and that really excites me and that's why this new data science interests me so much well helen thank you so much you've shared an awful lot of wisdom and insight i really appreciate it thank you to our fabulous audience i'm sure there are loads more questions there that we didn't even get time to 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 um ask but do please talk to us do please get in touch and we really hope that we'll be talking to you again about not only the course, but what we've learned and what we're moving on to beyond even that. So thank you so much and good luck everyone. And thank you, Helen Hamilton. Thank you.